Okay, let's talk about the order of operations. And uh, many of you out there know it by this acronym, P-E-M-D-A-S or PEMDAS. I'll get into that in a second. But um, I'd have to say that the order of operations is an area where many, many students think they understand it better than they actually do. <laughs> so we're going to take a look at a practice problem. And here it is. We're going to go through and and simplify this using the order of operations just to kind of review some of the things that you really need to understand. I would say, again, that uh, this is an area where it just trips up so many math students. So if you can really strengthen your understanding of the order of operations, just do a quick review, make sure you truly understand it, then that's going to help you out in math for sure. So uh, before we get started, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over the last several years, I've constructed many online math classes to include uh, several middle and, again, high school math classes. So the order of operations is typically taught at the middle school level. It's really kind of honed in there. So if you're in that range, middle school range, you might want to check out my pre-algebra class, for example. But nevertheless, I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video to my math learning program. And you can see, uh, you know, if there's a course there that might be right for you. Um, also, I'm going to um, invite you to become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. I already have hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel, posting stuff all the time. I love to teach math. So if you like my teaching style, probably already have a lot of stuff there that can uh, help you out through your course. And again, if you like this video, please consider giving a big thumbs up. All right, so let's get into the problem. All right, so here is the problem, okay? And I'm not going to recite it, but here it is. And I would uh, suggest that all of you out there, um, you know, pause the video and just go ahead and knock this problem out. Okay, see if you can do it on your own, fully simplified. Don't use your calculator, just a uh, uh, pencil and a piece of paper. Again, if you're watching this video, you're certainly interested in the order of operations. That either means that you're learning it for the first time, you don't know what you're doing, or maybe you're like struggling with it. Okay, so go ahead and and try this problem, even if you're not sure what you're doing, because you you might very well be making one of the common errors I'm going to be talking about. Uh, and again, I'm going to highlight these errors and these con uh, these common confusions, if you will, uh, so you can avoid them. All right, so let's get into the problem. But before we do that, let's talk about this PEMDAS, right? So PEMDAS <clears throat> is our kind of our it's our guide, okay? It's the instructions on how to uh, apply the order of operations. Now, what does this mean? Okay, let's go back up here real quick. Order of operations. This means something, right? Well, in mathematics, operations are things like this. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, powers, things like this. These are example of, of uh, mathematical operations. These are mathematical operators, okay? And we need to follow a particular order um, because if you look here at our problem, okay, we have all kinds of things going on. We got multiplication, subtraction, division, powers, fractions. You know, it's like, well, what do we do first, okay? And if you don't follow the correct order, or you're going to get the wrong problem. So order definitely makes a difference, and PEMDAS is our directions, okay? It is the order we want to follow, okay? But just to kind of emphasize this, there is a very specific order to simplifying uh, expressions that have all these mathematical operators, sum or all, okay? All right, so let's get down to this PEMDAS here again, all right? So let's just review what this means. Now, some of you might know this. Um, there's all kinds of cute little phrases out there. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally is one, probably one of the most famous. I think I probably learned that many, many, many decades ago when I was uh, uh, learning the order of operations. But your teacher might use another one, but almost uh, everyone has some sort of mnemonic, okay? So if you don't have one, go ahead and use, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So remember, PEMDAS, okay? Now, what does this uh, stand for? Well, P, let's just do a quick review, stands for re, uh, parentheses, okay? So you're going to do things, we want to do things first, okay, that are in parentheses or 
brackets or even like these little squiggly kind of guys, these brackets. These are called grouping symbols. So this little PEMDAS is telling us what to start first. We're gonna look for these guys first, and then we're gonna kind of go from left to right. We're gonna just check to see these operators. So this is our order, okay? We're gonna start here, and we're gonna proceed this way, kind of go through a little checklist, okay? So P is uh, everything inside parentheses, okay? We're gonna be looking for parentheses or brackets or little squiggly brackets, and we're gonna do everything inside them, okay? Now, after we've kind of done that, and again, there's a lot of variations, different type of practice problems involved in here. This is just a basic overview of, of this PEMDAS. Okay, so E, what does E stand for? Okay, well, E is really, a, it stands for exponent. So you kind of think of it like this, two cubed. This little E is an exponent, but really just think of E as powers, okay? We're gonna do any powers next, okay? So like two cubed or four squared, things like that, that's what E stands for, okay? We're gonna do powers next. And then we have M and D. So M and D, uh, this is multiplication, and this is division, okay? And let's just go ahead and put the rest in here. This is addition, and this is subtraction. Now, <clears throat> this is probably uh, one of the, big areas where students get confused on PEMDAS is we need to look at multiplication and division and addition and subtraction kind of as little bundles here. So we have P by itself, E by itself. Now, multiplication and division. So what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply, okay, and then divide, or we're going to divide, then multiply whatever we see first from left to right. Now, uh, many students confuse this because they think to themselves, oh, I have to do multiplication all the time before division. I must do multiplication all the time before division. And they, they go over here, they do multiplication um, in the wrong order, okay? So this is a big, big uh, area of under, uh, misunderstanding, okay? It's whatever you see first. So if you see multiplication before division, do it that way. If you see division and then multiplication, then that's what you're going to do. And the same thing applies for A and S, addition and subtraction. You're going to do addition or subtraction or subtraction or addition, whatever you see first, from left to right. Okay, so hopefully this has kind of cleared up a lot of uh, your uh, confusion, if you had any, or strengthened your understanding of PEMDAS. Now let's get to the problem here. And so we can kind of see what's going on. Now we have one big gold fraction, right? We have this numerator and this denominator. So what you want to do, the fraction bar in and of itself is kind of like a grouping symbol. So what you want to do is work independently of uh, both the numerator and denominator. In other words, simplify the numerator down to one value and then work on the denominator, simplify that down to one value, and then you can kind of simplify from there. Okay, so you never want to kind of, kind of um, intermingle your work. So you can kind of, depending on your um, your skill level or your, your practice, you can do more than one step at a time. I would suggest not doing any more than, say, two steps at a time, okay, when you're working a problem down. But whatever you're doing, make sure you show your work so your teacher can follow, and you can kind of review and make sure you did everything correct, okay? So with that being said, let's go ahead and just focus in on the numerator for now, okay? So we'll deal with the denominator here in a second. So let's take a look at the numerator and we're using PEMDAS, okay? So if you wanna write that down, go ahead and I'm not gonna bring it down with us all the time, but put that down on your, your piece of paper to the side here so we can just kind of use it as a guide. So the first thing is I'm looking, well, let me just do it here. What the heck, P-E-M-D-A-S. So I'm focused in on P, okay? So are there any parentheses? Yes, there are, okay? Remember parentheses, brackets, we call grouping symbols. So here, right here, this part of the problem are, is a uh, pair of brackets. So that indicates that we have to do everything inside those brackets first. So let's go ahead and do that. And the way I'm gonna show that is I'm just gonna simply rewrite the numerator, okay? Three times two squared, and be very careful here, divided by bracket now three times two i'm going to do what's inside the parentheses that is six okay 
minus 5, all right? So go ahead and rewrite the denominator, 8 divided by 4 times 2. Now, you're like, boy, that's a lot of writing. I can take a couple of steps at once. Again, this is where students uh, get in trouble in math. They become impatient or like, all right, I'm going to do this step, that step, and this step, and this step. And it's a noble, you know, kind of gesture. You're like, hey, I'm going to save time and space on my paper. But it, it more often than not, it messes students up, okay? Take a step, maybe two at most, okay? Look to see after you're done, okay? Look at your work. Make sure you copied your uh, the problem down correctly. So 3 times 2 squared divided by 3 times 2 is 6. So that was what I was supposed to do, minus 5. 8 divided by 4 times 2. Boom, I'm happy. Okay, so now let's continue to focus on the numerator. Okay, let me write our little pim das here. All right, so are there any more parentheses? No. So now there's, there's uh, this bracket here. You're saying, well, there's the brackets. Yeah, but really when there's nothing, there's nothing else to do, you can simply just drop those brackets. We'll just leave it there for a second, but there's no more brackets. So now let's go and check. Uh, for E, okay, are there any powers? Yes, there are powers, okay, right here, 2 squared, okay. Now, let me just make sure that I didn't, uh, this problem is 2 squared, not 2 cubed, just want to double check. All right, now, <clears throat> this is a real, another big area of confusion. Here's the mistake that I would see uh, thousands of times uh, through the years as a, as a uh, teacher. Um, I would see this mistake. Oh, a student encounter this. They would go 3 times 2 is 6. 6 squared, 36. That's what they would do. Totally wrong because they're not doing powers first, okay? So that's what we got to do. We have to go 2 squared, which is what? 2 times 2. So that's going to be 4. So let's just walk it down like this. 3 times 4 divided by, now we could just drop this brackets here, it's, it's a little redundant, there's nothing more to do here, uh, divided by 6 minus 5 over 8 divided by 4 times 2. Okay, so we did um, our exponent, okay, so <clears throat> again, I'm still focused on the numerator, okay, I'm still I'm focusing here, I'll deal with the denominator in a second. So are there any more powers? I don't see any more powers, right? So we're good there. So now I'm going to look at multiplication and division. Remember, I'm going to look at this as a bundle, right? So is there any multiplication and division? Yes, there is. This is multiplication, and then I got division here. So um, which comes first, okay? Well, multiplication comes first from left to right. So we're going to go ahead and write that down there. So 3 times 4 is 12 divided by 6 minus 5, and then I have here 8 divided by 4 times 2. Okay, so now we're really getting there, right? We're getting more and more simplified. <clears throat> and let me go ahead and write this down here. 12 divided by 6 minus 5 over 8 divided by 4 times 2. All right, so let's get our little PEMDAS out again, P-E-M-D-A-S. So um, let's go back to our M and D. Just, just because we just did a multiplication doesn't mean that we're going to move on to addition and subtraction. We have to exhaust all situations that involve multiplication and division. So we're looking, again, I'm focused on the number. Is there any multiplication or division? Yes, there is division going on here. So 12 divided by 6 is going to be 2. So this is going to be 2 minus 5, okay, over what's going to go on in the denominator. So this is a good opportunity to deal with the denominator right now. So let's kind of start working on that, okay? So 2 minus 5, we know our final answer here is going to be what? What is 2 minus 5? A little pop quiz for you. So if you said 3, you would be perfectly incorrect, <laughs> okay? It's not 3, it is negative 3. So watch your positive and negative number rules okay and that's what i'm talking about if you made that error then you got to slow down and just keep focused on all the little details of this problem so let's focus in on the denominator so i have um, 
Do I have any parentheses? Nope, I do not have any parentheses. Do I have any exponents? Nope, no exponents. Do I have multiplication and division? Yes, that's what I have, division and multiplication. So this time I have division before multiplication. See, a lot of students would make this error. Let's just do this wrong here for a second. What if we did um, the multiplication first? We would get 8 divided by 8, which is going to be 1, right? So if I did multiplication and then division, okay, it would be uh, the denominator value would be 1. But that's not what I'm supposed to do, okay? I'm supposed to do whatever comes first uh, from left to right. So division comes first, so I have to do um, 8 divided by 4. So that's going to be 2, okay? And then I have this multiplication, so 2 times 2, all right? So 2 times 2 is obviously going to be 4. This is my final answer. But you can see if I would have went the other route, if I did a multiplication first, I would have had 8 divided by 8 or 1. Okay, you would have gotten the wrong answer. There is a very specific, you know, order that we have to take when we're dealing with all these mathematical operators. That's why we have the order of operations. And thank goodness our Aunt Sally is helping us out here, right? So please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. But I think Aunt Sally sometimes didn't fully explain how she wants uh, us to use this recipe book. <laughs> you know, like, hey, again, you know, some of the biggest misunderstandings, I think, is uh, with the grouping of multiplication and division, addition and subtraction, again, left to right, left to right. All right, so hopefully um, you've kind of picked up. That's why I wanted to, um, you to do this problem first, because I wanted to see if you were going to make any errors, made any of these errors. If you made those errors, okay, I'm glad you made those errors while watching this video, because you know, you should learn from them, okay? Just because you made a mistake, it's not the end of the world, okay? What's critical is, are you learning? If you, did you understand why you made the mistake you did, and then did you correct it, all right? That's the most important part here. But as a math teacher of thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands, years and years and years and years and years of grading tests, quizzes, homeworks, et cetera, et cetera, okay, I can tell you right now, this is definitely the top, if I had to say, pick the top five, areas where all math students make mistakes, I would say order of operations is, you know, right up there, uh, one, one of the top ones, okay? So, anyways, hopefully this little review, um, you know, uh, you know, got you on the right path when in terms of order of operations, just because we're just working with numbers and not variables or anything else like that, don't you know, minimize, um, you know, the focus and effort, you know, and concentration level you have to have, okay, with order of operations. Again, show your work, no more than say two steps at a time, okay? Right now, when you're starting to learn this, just one step, nice and neat, double check, just work the problem, kind of whittle it all the way down until you have your final answer, okay? All right, so hopefully this video uh, helped you out. I wish you all the best in your mathematical adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.